A couple of summers ago, I was traveling together with my wife. We flew to Montreal for the day. It was visiting day. You know, in the olden days, they used to have uh, pre-COVID visiting day in overnight camps. It was the first time our son went overnight, overnight camp. And uh, we went to visiting day. So, you know, with the triplets and everything else, it was very hard finding um, people to take care of the triplets. But we did it. You know, we figured, let's do it. We flew to Montreal, we met with his counselors, we spent time with him, everything was beautiful. Now, because there were no flights going back that night, we we slept overnight in a hotel right near the airport, figuring we'd be in the first flight, 5 a.m. or 6 a.m. back to New York. Get to the airport, I had to still pray because there wasn't time to pray before, but as soon as we checked in on the computer online, the computer said the flight's overbooked. If you want to give up your seats, you know, come contact us. So we didn't even pay a second glance, second attention, because uh, we got kids at home. Anyway, I put on my tefillin, I'm, I'm starting to pray, and there's an announcement. It says like this, we're 18 people overbooked on the flight. If you're willing to be one of those people giving up your seat, we will give you $600, and we will book you on the next flight. So I looked at my wife, 600 times 2, that's $1,200, you know, it's pretty tempting, but... We got kids at home, including triplets and childcare is so difficult and you know it's it's, it's like insane. Forget about it. Nothing to talk about. I'm praying. A few minutes later, we hear an announcement. And the announcer says we still have twelve seats overbooked on this plane. Twelve seats overbooked. Um if you're willing to give up your ticket, we're willing to give you one thousand dollars. And they can be used on Amazon. Now, for Chabadniks, Amazon is like cash. That's pure cash. It's not a gift voucher for a next flight. It's cash. And we'll book you on the next flight. So we look at my wife, $2,000. Very, very, very tempting. But, you know, childcare, triplets, home, trying to figure out what would we do. Doesn't work. I'm continuing. I'm nearly finished praying. And the announcement goes again. It says we have six seats still left we're willing to give you thirteen hundred dollars if you're willing to give up your seat amazon which is cash do you want it and i'm like i'm like playing with my passport i'm like sure should, should we shouldn't we go twenty six hundred dollars i mean this is crazy this is this is like you know but we think what will we do no as i'm wrapping up my tefillin the announcer goes again he says, we have two tickets left. We're willing to give $1,600 each if you're willing to go on the next flight. That's it. I grabbed my passport. I ran over to the counter. I said, we're in. $3,200, Amazon, that's cash. And he says, okay. So I said, when's the next flight? He said, the next flight is 5 p.m. I said, forget it. There's no way. I, 5 p.m., the whole day. I thought maybe, you know, in a few hours, in an hour or two, you know, a half an hour, whatever. But... 5 p.m., that's the whole day. What do we do with the trip? It's impossible. I didn't even know what we would do. So I had to turn it down. But as we were walking onto the plane, and we saw other two people take the $3,200, I thought to my wife, you know, if he would have gone up just by one, five more dollars, that's it. I would have just rented a car, drove to New York. I mean, this is, this is crazy. The Torah says like this. There are three things that change a person. If you have these three things and they haven't changed you, it means you haven't had enough of them. The first one is alcohol. If you drink whiskey or vodka or tequila or any kind of drink and it hasn't changed you, you haven't reached your tolerance level because maybe your tolerance level is another cup. By me, if I just drink a little bit, I'm out. Somebody else, maybe a cup, maybe a jug, maybe, uh, you know, but everybody will be changed by alcohol. The second thing is money. Money will change you. If you earn a million dollars and it hasn't changed you for the positive or the negative, you haven't reached your tolerance limit. If you earn 10 million, 100 million, a billion, everybody has their limit where money will change you for the good, hopefully, but could be for the bad as well. The third thing is Torah. If you've learned Torah and it hasn't changed you for the better, you haven't reached your limit. You haven't studied enough. You haven't internalized it enough. Because if you study about Torah and meditate and contemplate about the greatness of God, it will change you for the better. We now find ourselves right before Tisha B'Av. Tisha B'Av is where we mourn for the destruction of the two temples. Even exile has a limit. We pray multiple times in our prayers. 
every day. We beg God, please end us this exile. We know that this exile has a limit because everything has a limit and it will change. We know that it will change. I was listening to a talk of the Rebbe this week where the Rebbe screams, he quotes the Yerushalmi, the Talmud, which says, Call me Shelonivna Beit Amikdash Beyamav, Hareze Kilu Nechrav Beyamav. Whoever has a day in his life pass by and the temple hasn't been rebuilt, it's as if the temple has been destroyed today. Now imagine you see the temple burning in flames right in front of your eyes today. You would change the world. You would, you would, you would scream. You would do everything in your power to make sure the temple is not destroyed. Well, that is as if it's happening every day of our lives that the temple hasn't been rebuilt. What do we need to do? Go out and do another mitzvah, another mitzvah, another mitzvah. Put on tefillin, keep kosher, learn Torah, give charity, convince another Jew to do another good deed. Because when you do these good deeds, these good deeds, everything has a limit. It will change the world. Doing mitzvot, learning Torah will change the world for the better. It will bring Mashiach. Somebody asked me last week, Rabbi, the Holocaust, the Mashiach never came. How do you know he's going to come now? How do I know? Torah gives us a prophecy. Torah says everything has a limit. Just like a person, just like me on that plane from Montreal, eventually you would have given me a little bit more money, I would have changed. The exile also has a limit. And your mitzvah today could tip the scale, could make Mashiach come. Go out, do that mitzvah. And this Shabbat is also called Shabbat Chazon, Shabbat of Vision. Shabbat of vision. The simple explanation is because Jeremiah has a vision of the destruction of the temple. But that's the sad reason. The inner reason is because God shows us a vision of the third temple. He says, this is how it's going to look. If only we do that extra mitzvah today, right now, Mashiach will come ending the exile. L'chaim may it take place right now.